everyone, welcome to part two of this lemur tutorial. So this final part, I'll be taking you through the neck, which is a mix of black fur and really warm cream fur. So to start off with, I'm just going to add a few more needed details to the face. So just a few more long black whiskers at the top here, just my Stabilo Black 750. And then my Titanium White from Stabilo 100 to pull out some nice long white ones as well. And a few little ends up the top here, just for extra detail and just to really soften up the top of the head as well. So getting a nice touch of light right on the edge of the head. So a few down into the forehead as well, just to lighten it slightly and get some more little hair details in place as well. And then back with my Stabilo Black 750, a few very, very wispy, dark ends of hairs as well. For the same effect, just to make sure the top of the head is nice and fluffy and soft. So for the neck, I'm going to begin in the really warm cream section here. We want a base tone like a brown earth four from Unison, which is a little bit of a darker beige, as you can see. And that's going to get that slightly yellowy orange tone running through the fur. And then as we move into the slightly lighter edge of the neck, I'm going to pick out my Brown Earth 3 from Unison. So just as it starts to get a little bit lighter and a few little touches into the center of the neck as well, just where you can see some light and some structure as well. And then going even lighter with my Natural Earth 18 from Unison. So these three tones are the main ones that I love to use in beige fur, cream fur, anything that's light in tone. So what I'm doing here is just looking at the photograph and picking out the lighter areas of fur that I can see. It doesn't matter if you don't get the areas exactly as they are in the photograph, just get the rough areas mapped in place. So a little bit here as well as we move up towards the ear. And then right below the ear, the fur is very, very bright. So I'm going to use my Smink White just to block in a little bit of light base there. And then as we move downwards, it does start to get a little bit more cold in tone. So my gray 17 from Unison. So still nice and light, but just a little bit colder in tone. And then taking my sponge, I'm going to blend all of those layers together. So just blurring them into each other and creating a nice solid base. Obviously with your initial base, it's never going to cover the paper up completely. So don't be frustrated if you get to the end of blending and you're wondering why it's still looking quite gritty. We do need to add quite a few more tones and layers. So don't worry at all at this stage. So really blending it into the paper. Then I'm going to start to darken a little bit and get some nice vibrancy into the fur. So this is my Burnt Sienna from Faber-Castell 283. So getting some of this slightly reddy brown tone in to mimic that color that we have in the photograph, which is quite dark, but also vibrant. And on the edge of that, I'm going to add a little bit of an orange tone. This is my Burnt Okra from Faber-Castell 187. So that's getting it to look a little bit more fiery in tone, which we can see in the photograph. So taking my sponge to soften, just working those layers together there. It's looking a little bit peculiar at this stage, especially because we've got so much detail up ahead. So 
So a bit more of my Burnt Sienna from Faber-Castell 283. This is me now strengthening the tones, getting another layer in, just make sure that the tones remain nice and vibrant and strong throughout and it makes your pastel work just pop that little bit more. So another layer of my burnt okra from Faber Castell 187. So it's not always easy to get an exact tone with just one tone that you can see in the photographs. So always try and mix a few together to get the tone that you want. You can always practice on a spare piece of paper if you're worried what the color mix might come out as. So my Natural Earth 18 from Unison, that light tone just on the edge here to thicken up the, the base there. and then take my sponge to blend. So it may seem a bit bizarre to use a reddy brown and an orange, but you can see how it's really, really needed to create that kind of fiery orange tone that we have in the center of the chest here. So my white from Smink, very, very lightly on the edge here, just to get a little bit more of a pop of light just around the outline there. So blending that in with my sponge. And then I'm going to take my Bista from Stabilo 635 and just shape under the chin here a little bit more. So just to give it a little bit more structure so my black as well from Stabilo 750, just pulling out some of the lines that are a bit more obvious. We want this area to look nice and three-dimensional, so we do need plenty of structure going on. And then just grabbing that bister again from Stabilo 635, just to add a little bit more brown under the black here, just on the edge to help it to soften into the lighter beige tone next to it a lot more naturally. So starting to shape down the chin here a little bit more. And just softening on my finger, just getting rid of these sharp lines, making them a bit more blurred. And then what I'm going to do is start to roughly map out the tufts. So by doing that, I'm picking out the dark areas that I can see in the photograph, which is in between the individual tufts, and I'm blocking it in with this dark brown tone. So very, very roughly looking in the photograph and seeing where those obvious areas are. You can slightly blur the focus of your eyes when you look at the photograph. And what that does, as I've explained before, in my tutorials is it just helps you to pick out the more obvious areas of darkness and also light as well instead of getting completely confused and overwhelmed by everything else going on all the other details it just helps you to pick out those main areas that you need to darken or lighten so the main shapes basically so i'm just coloring in just creating some patterns here and then i can work my light fur around it so getting the shape and the structure in at the base stage which is so important because you're not going to be able to do this at the detail stage you have to make sure your depth and structure is correct at the base stage and then you can work around it like a map with your hairs later on so really softening all of those lines with my finger Using my sponge as well, just some of the lines that aren't quite shifting. We don't want any obvious lines in our base work. So if you can't blend them out with your finger enough, switch back to your sponge. So I haven't actually blended the white into the paper. So just doing that with my sponge. Okay, 
and then thickening up my base a little bit more now it's still looking quite wishy-washy so my smink white again just in this area here to make it really pop so softening that in with my sponge And then as we move round slightly, the fur gets a bit more beige in tone. So switching to my Natural Earth 18 from Unison. So starting to pick out some rough light tufts as well as we curve round. So just in this area where it's a bit lighter, pulling them out as slight marks just to make sure it's not too flat when I pull it out. So softening that in with my sponge. And then getting the base in on this edge here. So my cold gray fall from Stabilo 726, just where it's a bit lighter. And then my smink serious black, obviously where the black fur is. So just blocking that in there. Just picking out the ends of a couple of tufts here, just to make sure it's not a straight line going on between our divide of our cream fur and our black fur. So softening that in with my sponge. So adding some black on this side as well. Pulling it slightly in with some lines just into the areas that eat into the cream fur a little bit. So not taking it right up to the top of the back on the right edge because it's quite warm base there and it's a little bit lighter, so I'm going to use a different base tone there later on, but just using the black for the really dark area that I can see. So softening that in with my sponge. And then because I've blended the center area, which of course is essential, you'll see the structure has got a little bit muted naturally. So I'm going to add another layer of my Bista from Stabilo 635. So this is what I mean by continuously adding in lots and lots of layers. And that's going to make sure the structure is really obvious. The tones are really nice and strong as well. So I'm literally just going over the areas that I added this base before and just adding another layer, picking out those areas and making them look just that little bit darker. So a little up the top here. And then as I mentioned, we want to use something a little bit lighter for the back area here. So this is my dark sepia from Faber-Castell 175. So it's a little bit warmer, the fur on the edge here. So that's why I'm using this dark, really, really dark brown tone. I'm also going to mix a little bit of my Bista from Stabilo in 635 just to really amp up that warmth. And then continuing with my dark sepia from Faber-Castell 175, just up this edge here and then even lighter right on the edge here, but still warm base. So I'm using my warm gray five from Stabilo, which is number 708. So right up the edge there. And then I'm going to start to thicken the base even more. So my black, my serious black from Smink, just adding another layer in here just to make it nice and dark. And then using my sponge to blend it in and of course blend the dark sepia layer and the warm gray five and the Bista layer together as well. 
I feel like every time I say serious black, it just makes me think of serious black, as in serious black from Harry Potter. I'm a massive Harry Potter fan. And ever since someone said that when I say it, it sounds like serious black because it is very similar, it just makes me want to giggle. But obviously, I don't think all of you would get it if you haven't seen Harry Potter. So I just kind of giggle in my head. But yeah, it's just one of those things, you know, when someone points something out and then it just is forever engraved in your brain or like you see something and someone points out that it looks like something else and you're just like, well, now I can never unsee that, but this is more, I can't unhear it. So really blending here. And then strengthening that Burnt Sienna as well from Faber-Castell 283. So mainly at the top, just under the chin here where it's pretty vibrant. And then mixing a little bit on top of the Bista that I've just blended in. And of course, a bit more of my orange, so my burnt okra from Faber-Castell 187. So just getting that in the mix there to make it a bit more orange in tone, and nice and vibrant. So another blend with my sponge, you can see how much thicker this base is now looking. Completely cover the paper, it's now just a case of really really shaping and getting some nice structure in place. So I'm going to map in some light tufts now speaking of structure. So my brown earth three from Unison to start off with at the top here just where it is a little bit darker and then as we move upwards slightly it does get into the slightly whiter fur so I'm using my smink white. So up towards the base of the ear as well here. So just little marks here and then back with my Brown Earth 3 from Unison. So working this out as little marks which just helps start to get some texture in. If you work it in, in kind of flat lines it's going to be hard to blend it out and change the direction. So try and work these in almost like hairs so that when you blend, obviously you can't blend it out completely, you'll still see some rough lines going on. At least they are going in the direction that the fur is actually going in, so it does make your life a lot easier. So you'll see I'm curving these ones round, and then into the centre here, just picking out a few little tufts. So going even lighter with my Natural Earth 18 from Unison now. So right on the edge here where it is a little bit lighter. A little bit under the cheek here. And then some right on the edge here as well, just where those ends are a touch lighter. And then taking my sponge to blend that out and this time I'm using the edge of my sponge to work in the technique that I used in part one which is basically curving these soft pastel lines round to create some shape and individual tufts and basically using the soft pastel as more of a tool to create texture and movement instead of just using the sort of flat of the sponge and just rubbing all of this pigment all the way over. So try and pull it out as kind of hair details, but very rough hair details. So really blending this.
and then another layer of my Brown Earth 3 from Unison. Now that I've given that a blend, I do need to start to thicken up the fur even more and just make those tufts, the individual ones, a little bit more defined and stand out a bit more. So we do need another layer going on. So down the bottom here. And then another blend with my sponge. Again, using the tip or the edge of my sponge just to work these tufts out. So what I'm going to do now is get a tiny bit more depth into my fur. It's already looking nice and light, but we do need to make it look a little bit thicker. So I'm going to take a dark brown tone. This one's my Burnt Umber from Faber-Castell 280. And I'm starting to work some rough fur direction in with this dark tone, like I did with the Vista. This is just an additional tone that I'm adding in for interest. So starting to pick in between the light areas that we've got going on. And it's just generally darkening up and getting some of the structure to look a bit more obvious and a bit darker as well. So my Quetta color, just quickly going to pull out that shape on the ear here, just around the back as well, just shaping that line. And then back with my Burnt Umber from Faber-Castell 280. Just going to continue the lines down here. So just roughly getting these dark areas mapped in and darkened. I'm also going to mix some dark sepia in from Faber-Castell 175 just to make it a touch deeper. We want these to look nice and thick here, the areas in between the tufts. I don't want to add too much of a black in as it's going to mix with the yellow and go a bit of a funny colour. So that's why I'm using something close to a black but a bit warm based like my dark sepia. And then taking my finger to soften so with these lines here, I want them to remain quite dark. So when you're at the, towards the end of the base stage and you want your areas to remain quite dark, it's often better to use your finger instead of your sponge. So just blending that out there. And then grabbing my Creta Color, I'm going to start to darken up these lines that are moving in towards the center of the neck. So just some rough lines here. So some little details here. Just eating down into this area here. Just softening a little bit more with my finger. Just can see a little bit of excess pigment sitting there, so I'm just blending that in. And 
and then some crest color here as well just to really darken so picking in between the ends of the tufts there and then softening with my finger again just working that pigment in and then grabbing my Smink Serious Black again. I'm going to just thicken up a little bit more here. I just want it to be a touch darker, just to get some nice contrast in place. So softening with my finger. So nearly time to add the fur details in. I just want to add in one last layer of base tufts and also get this area to look a little bit more vibrant. So every time you blend, you do lose vibrancy. So I'm just grabbing that burnt sienna again from Faber-Castell 283 and just working a little bit on top of the darker areas of, in between the tufts. So giving that a soften with my sponge here. I'm just working in with my finger as well, just to get rid of the last of the excess. And then my Brown Earth 3 from Unison, starting to pick out those tufts now even more. So another layer just to make them nice and defined. So just like I did before, really, just picking out roughly where they sit in the photograph. So another blend with my sponge, it's really starting to look more structured now and more three-dimensional. So really softening here. And then finishing off the base with my Natural Earth 18 from Unison, which is just that little bit lighter than the Brown Earth 3. And I'm picking out the even lighter tufts. So just some on the right of the cream area and some in the middle as well. So for the hair details, I'm going to start off with dark first instead of light. And that's the case with all of my base work. I always start darker and then work up gradually to light. So this is my Bista from Stabilo 635. And kind of like what I did at the base stage, I'm starting to add this tone in in the darker areas. But this time it's more as a refined detail stage. So I'm concentrating a little bit more where I'm placing this and in terms of the direction as well. So under the chin. So nice long strokes.
blending it in with my finger. Remember what I said before, it's easier to keep dark areas dark by using your finger at this stage. And then taking my titanium white from Stabilo 100, I'm going to start to work my light hairs in under the ear here. So it's very, very nice and bright, so I can confidently go straight in with a white here. So a little bit of cretic color here, just to shape around this area, just making it a little bit darker and just refining a few areas. So a few dark hairs here as well, just to get some detail in place. And then back with my titanium white from Stabilo 100. So just continuing to build these nice bright hairs in under the ear. So here as well, slightly shorter ones as we move around to the face and just crisscrossing them slightly just to make them a bit more natural and less perfect. Quickly going to take my rubber and just reshape the edge there. I just want to make it a little bit less rounded. And then working some white hairs out here as well. So out into the background, nice and bright here. So again, can confidently work white hairs straight on top. So as we move into the slightly darker cream fur, I'm going to switch to a warm kind of yellow light tone. This is my ivory from Faber-Castell, which is number 103. So just starting to pick out some detail along the chin here. And down into the darker cream fur, very, very lightly pulling out these little hairs, very, very thin. That's because I'm pressing very lightly, just pulling them at a diagonal downwards here to get some movement in place. So it's nice and warm base with hints of yellow, this tone, so perfect for this area. And then what I'm going to do is take my Burnt Umber from Faber-Castell 280, which is that dark brown tone, and just pick in between those ivory hairs to get some more depth and also just helps the light hairs to stand out a touch more. So just in this area here. Just tapping with my finger to get rid of any grittiness, which you do tend to get with the Faber-Castell pastel pencils. So a bit more of the ivory from Faber-Castell 103, just on the edge here. And then moving down into the neck to start to work these in as kind of individual tufts now. 
So following the rough uh, direction that I've got already mapped in that you can faintly see in the base. So you can see where some of those brush or sponge strokes are. I'm just following those round and that's why it makes your life a lot easier when you do that at the base stage because you know exactly which way to go with these hairs. So wiggling them out slightly, very, very short, these ones, quite tufty as well. So leaving gaps in the base, just where we want a bit more darkness to show through. That's where the structure sits. And then obviously where the fur is a lot lighter, we're condensing these ivory hairs a lot closer together. So pausing that for now, just to make sure I don't go too crazy, I'm going to add in my dark hair details now with my Cretacolor. So this helps the work to look a lot more striking. At the moment, it's looking naturally quite, quite washed out because of the ivory layers. So by going in with some dark black hairs like this and just work in those darker areas of base and literally just pick out some hairs, it just helps it get even more structure in place and makes the fur look more punchy and less kind of faint and a bit boring really. So softening with my finger, it doesn't mute them too much, it just makes sure that the, the lines are a little bit softer and just helps the fur work to look a bit more blurred. So we don't want to go too crazy with black everywhere. So pausing for now and just adding some, continuing with some dark brown hairs instead. This is my Burnt Umber from Faber-Castell 280. So this is going in those areas of darker base. So literally just working this in roughly just to darken it slightly and get some more fur direction in place. So softening with my finger. And I'll just zoom in for you as I'm going to pack quite a lot of light hairs and now for the light tufts. So I'm going to switch to my golden okra light from Stabilo 692, which as you'll see is a really nice, vibrant, light yellow tone. And this is going to help the cream fur to look a bit more punchy and a bit more vibrant instead of a little bit washed out if we use too much of that ivory. So as I did with the ivory, I'm wiggling these hairs outwards, just in those tufts that we can see in the, in the base work. So curling them round the edge here, taking my time, not try not to let it overwhelm me. These tufts are quite complicated, but try not to focus on making them exactly as they are in the photograph. Just use your eye and just use your gut as well and just, do what feels right and what you feel looks right and just the direction you think looks more natural. So I follow the rough guide that I have in the photograph but I certainly don't copy them exactly as they are. It just makes life a little bit of a nightmare especially if you don't get it right and then you're kind of kicking yourself but this way is not really a wrong way because you're kind of just going with the flow really. So just making sure these are nice and spaced out. This tone is quite vibrant, so you want to be careful about not pressing too hard or condensing the hairs too close together as you'll get quite a solid tone of yellow coming out.
So now that I've added another layer of my light hairs, I'm not going to forget about the dark hair details. So grabbing my Vista from Stabilo, again, 635. You can also use the Burnt Umber from Faber-Castell, but I do like to dance between the two just to get a nice even mix of dark browns in the fur. So just picking around the light tufts here. So just anywhere you can see some darker base, I'm just working some dark hairs outwards and that just makes sure that the dark areas also look hairy and not bald. So quite short strokes here, nothing too long. Working some ends into this tuft here just to break into it as I can see in the photograph. So down the bottom here, curling them round. Just going to erase the pigment there a little bit, which has worked too far into the background. And then with my Cretacolor, I'm going to just darken a few areas even more to make it look even more striking. So this tuft here is a little bit darker, it's a bit deeper. So I'm adding some hairs in with this tone here. Round here as well. You see what a difference this makes. It just makes the it makes the lighter tufts look lighter and more raised as well, and it makes those darker areas look even more dramatic. So really working these dark hairs out.
and then tapping with my finger just to get rid of the grittiness that you can see slightly there. So working a few dark hairs on the edge here. And some up here as well. Just getting a little bit more shape around the bottom of the cheek here. Then I'm going to start to lighten even more. So grabbing my ivory from Stabilo 103 for another layer of light fur. So always gradually lightening for a more natural look. So literally just working these into those lighter tufts, just another layer here on top of the golden ochre light. Just wiggling them outwards here. So remember to space them out a little bit more when you get into any darker areas. So around the edge here. Down here, lots of long ends going on, just working them into the black area. So to get the fur to look a little bit more tufty, you do need to wiggle your hand a little bit and that just makes sure the hairs don't come out too straight and too perfect. So a few into the black area of fur here, just a few ends just to make sure there's not an obvious start and stop between two different areas. So some more here, just gradually layering these in.
And then taking my white pastel pencil, I'm going to lighten this edge a little bit more at the bottom of the ear. So this is my Faber Castell White, which is nice and highly pigmented. Not quite as highly pigmented as the Chinese White from Caran d'Ache, but I'm aware that it's not been available or in, it's not been in stock for ages. So this is a brilliant alternative to use. It's not, as I say, not as bright, but it certainly does a good job to get some highlights in. So just going in with another layer of white to brighten this edge here. So in, on top of the initial layer of Stabilo white hairs, just to make sure these areas of fur really, really pop out. So wiggling some out down here as well, these tufts that move into the black fur are quite nice and light. So layering in some white hairs here as well. So back up to the top here, curving these ones round. And then using my finger to soften a little bit, get rid of the grittiness. A few tiny ones upwards here. And then onto this edge here. It's nice and bright, so I'm going to use some grey white from Stabilo 110 to get some light hairs, little ones just on the edge here, just to pick out a tiny bit of shine. So it's a little bit colder based on this side, so that's why I'm using a cold grey tone. So right up to the top here, really pulling them inwards. It's made them look extra fluffy, which is good. And then up this side as well, it starts to get a little bit colder right at the top, so working in some light with this tone here. And then as we move downwards, it does start to get more warm in hue. So my warm grey 5 from Stabilo 708, if you remember, I use this tone right on the edge of the back. But what I'm doing with this tone now is pulling out these tiny little strokes to mimic the, the lighter tips of hairs going on, so the slightly agouti fur. So literally just picking these out, condensing some of them in little groups and others a bit more spaced out just to make sure that the fur looks a little bit more natural and make sure we don't have each you know, hair an equal distance between the next one and then the next one and that just looks a little bit too perfect and too neat.
So it's also quite brown as you move towards the edge of the back. So I'm going to pause on the warm grey five and take my Bista from Faber-Castell 179, which is a medium yellow tone, and just pick out some little warm hairs here. So just on that base beneath, just helps get that tonal change in there, which is important to pay attention to because it will make the fur look even more realistic than just having a gray on top of a black base, which is very boring. So mainly in the center of the back here, not working it too close to the edge as it's quite light there. So grabbing my Creta color, just going to work some dark hairs in. So you probably can't really see them on the camera, but I'm literally just working some tiny hairs in, in between those little hair layers that I added in, and just a few into the tufts on the left slightly. Just helps get a little bit more depth in there and helps the black fur to not look so flat. So getting some darker hairs poking out just makes it look a little bit more realistic. So in between the brown hairs as well. Then for the edge where it's a little bit lighter, I'm going to obviously stick with the warm hue, but pick out a gray. This is my gray three from Stabilo, which is number 704. So this is going right on the edge here. It's not too bright, which is perfect. We don't want anything too kind of shiny and bright on the edge here. It's just about getting a light hint that the fur is slightly brighter on the edge here. So again, kind of working this out in condensed areas where I want the fur to look a little bit lighter. And then as we work into the dark areas of fur, I'm spacing them out a little bit more and just making sure they have a bit more gaps so we can see the dark base showing through underneath. So a little clump here. Here as well, and that's going to help with the shape. So last few stages, final touches, a little bit more Bista from Faber-Castell 179. So a bit more of that medium yellow tone just to work a few more of this tone in here to just thicken up the, the fur work as well and just make sure this tone is nice and strong and showing through. So a little bit here as well, just to make it a touch warmer. And then my Chinese white from Caran Dash 901, or obviously the Faber-Castell white, just to get some nice white highlights going on now. So another layer of white here, just to really lighten up this tuft. So working my way along woods, wiggling my hands slightly, you can see the ends of these are coming out in all kinds of directions. So down here as well, and then up the edge, it's a little bit lighter here, so wiggling some out, making a few ends a little bit longer to pull into the background. So 
So down into the shoulder as well, just giving that a nice light edge. Into the tufts, just picking out a few little tips just to make them stand out a bit more, look a bit more raised and like the, the light is hitting them a little bit harder. So up towards the head, just making sure that the, the top section merges down into the neck a lot more smoothly. Obviously, if you work in sections, it's quite disjointed when you work the head and neck base separately. So I'm just working lots and lots of hairs on the edge of the two areas just to make sure they blend into each other nice and naturally. So a few more here. And a few little ones along the mouth line as well. Just a little bit of a light line along the chin as well, just for some more shape. And just picking that line out a bit more with my Creta Keller. So just final refinements now. My Ivory from Faber-Castell 103. Just a little bit of warm light here just reshaping this area that line's a little bit bright that I've pulled out there so using my credit color just to soften it just darken up that little shadow a bit more as well so a few more credit color hairs just to finish off so any of the tufts that need to look a little bit darker, just where the divides are, you can add a few of these black hairs in. So not pressing too hard, just the lightest touch to pull out a little bit of darkness. And as I say, that just helps to pick out those light tufts even more and make the fur look even denser. So if you compare this neck at the right at the end to how it was two minutes ago, you'll see how that black has actually made such a difference and it's made it look even better. So that is a Lima study for you. I hope you've really, really enjoyed it. If you are in the full animal tutorial tier, you will also be receiving a full cat tutorial this month. This focus piece for the focus tutorial was a little treat. I don't often do full length ones, but I just thought it's nice to do one every so often. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.